Welcome Aquarius. This is G. We're going to talk about December for you. Your December, we've got some new beginnings. We've got two new beginnings in the month of December. So I'm going to dip into those with the astrology. And then of course, we're going to do cards. First, we're going to talk about an ending. We have an ending. We all have an ending. It's a full moon energy comes right in uh, first week of December. And uh, yeah, what are you releasing? What are you letting go? What are you completing? Yeah, that's the sort of energy for this full moon. Now, it's uh, it's all about thinking and talking and the way that you share information. Yeah. So the sharing information piece, I think, is a big deal because this is within like uh, social media or with your neighbors or at school or at, with coworkers or sibling energy even. This is... Um, the mind and the way the mind works, lots of changes that we're all going through with our brains right now and the way that we take information in, the way that we process it, and then the way that we put it back out there, right? The way we share it. So this could be like include phone calls and emails and text messages. It could even be snail mail. It's definitely news, it's definitely social media. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of crazy, crazy stuff going down with some larger social media sites, right? A lot of crazy crap. Um, cause it's digital. Yeah. It's digital energy. This is a full moon in Gemini energy. And so Gemini is all of those things I've just said, right? And so for people in your life, it's siblings and coworkers, your next door neighbors, literally. Okay. People that are around you, people in your local community. Yeah. Local community energy. So, it's a completion though. It's like we're ending something. Now, Gemini is also talking. I said that maybe three times now, but it's sales, right? It's like me right now talking and it might sound like I'm trying to sell astrology, like I'm trying to sell this idea of what I'm talking about, right? And then for others listening to it, they may be like, well, no, you're teaching it. Yes, it's teaching. And so for you listening, if you're here to learn something, Yes, it's learning. That's all Gemini energy. It's crazy. So for some people, this can just simply be something like I'm finishing uh, a class or, you know, if I had an online thing happening, I'm, I'm done. It, it ends in December, right? It's, it's the semester's over in December. It could be something like that. Or it could just simply be a communication is finalized, right? So it depends on where it happens in your chart. So I've got that piece for you too. So for you, Aquarius, um, yeah, fifth house. So it has to do with children, fun, joy, creativity, and romance. Yeah, the way you have a fun time with your body. It's also the way you take a risk with your body, risks that you take in general. It's risks that you take. Now, because you have because you have um, Gemini energy here in this fifth, fifth place, this may, this can be, you know, I have a friend who, has some uh, Gemini energy here. And um, I think for them, having their Gemini energy there, they do a lot of vlogging and like they're always doing stuff online, right? So they even teach online actually. And so students can be children, school children, because remember it's Gemini energy, people who are uh, learning, but they're younger than you, right? And so for some of us, depending on what our our ages, it could be a coworker, right? Or even someone that you live with who's a peer, right? And again, it doesn't have to be someone you live with. That's a peer. You could just have a peer in your life, right? In some way. So <clears throat> a closure and an ending. Okay. So when we think about that fifth house, just remember children, fun, joy, creativity, romance. So maybe for some of you, it's a creative project. Maybe you began something back a little while back and you're like, okay, it's, you know, this is the deadline. It's done. It's over with, right? It could be something like that. All right, now we're going to pull a quick card for you so that uh, I've already been shuffling them uh, for Aquarians. Um, yeah, I know. I think endings and some might be thinking, well, this could be my romantic partner. It could be. You're right. Maybe some people were online dating because this would be Gemini energy in the fifth house. Absolutely. Looking online for a romantic other. And then like, I mean, I don't know, just saying, okay, I'm not doing that anymore for whatever the reason is. It doesn't have to always be something bad, right? It could just be, I found somebody, you know, it could be something good. So if you found somebody, then you're no longer looking, right? You're no longer doing that, or at least, I, at least, yeah, I would think that's, that you're not out there still. So they're saying to simply cut the deck 
old school, which I was just doing this to grab it in each hand. Then they're saying to put this one on top and that I'm to take this card. So this is for your ending. Okay. The ending that begins in the beginning of December, um, you're completing something and you're releasing something and, or, or someone, right? It's a, it's a release, a completion to let go. Okay. This doesn't look that fun. I'm sorry that we got a card that doesn't look all great and fun. This speaks to, you, you see how you have your, your sign up there, Aquarius. So that's interesting. Um, but we also have Saturn up there, right? We've got Mars and we've got Saturn at the bottoms of the card. And so Mars is the actions, the actions that you take. And so yours was within the fun energy of groups and friends, right? And there's something where you're feeling a little isolated possibly. And so it could simply be, um, yeah, no longer around as many friends as you used to be around. Some sort of group energy, though, could be online, absolutely. And, and it's just you feeling isolated. Don't be alarmed by this person like, oh, my God, they're in jail. Well, yeah, this person feels like they're in jail because there's rules. There's restrictions of some sort. See how they, yeah, there's bars. The bars are representing the restrictions, the regulations, the rules. And to the jester, any rule feels like, what? You, you mean I have a rule I have to follow, right? So there's something here where there's a feeling of possibly being isolated or somehow restricted in some way that you can't have fun the way you were, were having it before. So it, this could simply signify the card because it's got Aquarian energy on it. That is also digital groups, right? So there's just probably something happening where you're like quitting something possibly even. But it looks like because of some sort of rules, you feel like either you're done because it's a full moon, so you're, it's a completion, and you're just like, hey, some sort of responsibility. Let's not forget, I keep hearing responsibility because of Saturn. And if it is pertaining to children or creative projects, for some, of, for some folks, if they end a creative project, right, if they no longer are creating, it can bring that feeling of loneliness and isolation. Being in a creative mode makes people feel free. Yeah. So for lots of you out there, this can look a lot of different ways. If you're not sure or if you're confused and you need clarity, just comment to me below and I can help you figure that out. Now, moving on, we're going to your beginning because there's actually two new beginnings this month. Two, not one, but two. So the first new beginning happens right around the beginning of December and it has to do with Jupiter, the greater benefic Jupiter. So Jupiter energy is beneficial it brings good normally. Normally it brings good. Now it's sliding back. It's going to go direct is what this means. I said sliding back. It's going to go back into Aries energy, which is your physical body, which was kind of like that Mars energy. It is Mars that I just showed you on that last card. So if Jupiter goes there, that means Jupiter increases your assertion. It increases your ability to act. It increases your ability to be first. It can also make us impatient and more irritable. So keep that in mind. I'm also telling that to myself because when we've had for these two months, when we had Jupiter and Pisces, it gave us a sense a little bit more relaxed. It took the edge off without having to have a drink or without having to take something. It gave us that extra sense of, of peace and serenity, serene feeling right? It's just a calm vibe is Pisces energy. So when it goes into Aries, it's the opposite of that. It's more like, okay, now it's time to go. And it's like a race and it's aggressive. It's assertive. It's like, but I want to be first, damn it. And it can be, it can be a little in your face energy, right? And so if Jupiter goes in that, it's like, oh, wow, what's going on? There's a lot of that happening, right? So let's remember it's on the world axis points. So we might hear about you know, how many times Russia's backed out and then they come back forward. Nobody believes anything Putin says, right? Everyone's like, oh, he said we're backing out, but is it real? No, everybody knows it's always just to recruit, regroup, recoup and regroup, both words, um, and, and then just go back into the war and have at it, right? So uh, we'll see what that looks like, right? But for you in your own life, what does this mean on a personal private scale? Let's see the notes I have for you. This is in your second, I'm sorry, this is your third house, your third house of communication. So back up, back up a notch, right? You're back up on and in, in, in communications and talking, and this is friends, this is coworkers, this is learning, 
learning something new, uh, taking action, being a, a very vocal and assertive communication coming from you or for, from others around you. And who would those others be? Well, it's your third house. So your third house is siblings and it's coworkers. It could be schoolmates. It could be peers, you know, like someone you live with, someone in your local community and in your immediate environment. It's the way you share information and the way they share information. And so back in December, that's all going to go back up a notch for everybody. Okay. So in your third house, you just want to be aware because you will likely be less impatient, or I'm sorry, you will likely be more impatient, less, uh, just your place of peace is kind of, you know, it's just, um, yeah, it's like if you had a flame lit, that was the candle of peace, like someone snubbed the candle of peace out. And it doesn't mean, okay, all this is going to be horrible. It just means you're probably likely going to be more easily irritated. All right. And, and I don't know if you paid attention, like through uh, October and November. Did you notice October and November? You didn't get as um, angry or you, you had more patience than you thought you were going to have or others in your life did. Like their words weren't as, you know, like people just might've seemed a little bit more understanding, at least by the way they were communicating. Right. So we had this beneficial Jupiter and Pisces then. Right. And so now it's back in Aries and it's back in your third house. So let's pull a quick card for you just to give you a good visual and to give you a little bit more details on what this could be. Um, but it's a new beginning. So, uh, yeah, it's Jupiter and Jupiter can be, it's like, let's, you know, go big or go home. That's Jupiter, right. In starting something. Yeah. So communications online news, were you, um, this is somebody who's wanting to always learn. This is someone who is uh, an assertive learner, but it's like, there's never enough information, right? And you would probably like to be the person who was first with the information. Like you don't want to just share it. You want to be the one out there who brings it to people. Like nobody heard about it until you came along and they were like, oh snap, you always get the information first, or at least you want to have it first. They're saying to grab this card right here. So we're going to do that. I was shuffling while we were talking. So are you ready for this? I'm ready. Okay, this is very practical. This is home. This is domestic side of life. It shows a uh, Libra and Virgo energy. So you see Venus down there and Mercury, they get along, which is good. So there's communication, clear communication, but it's projects and tasks and work. That's going to speed up, right? Whatever you were doing before, you're getting more projects and tasks and work uh, once December comes around. Uh, maybe it's you know, news about a new project, a new task, because it's about news and information. Okay. It, it takes compassion. It takes understanding. It takes compromise, but something about this has a domestic vibration to it because it's the tasks that aren't glamorous, right? We're cutting wood. We're washing laundry. Oh, joy. I washed all the laundry today. Like who gets all excited about that? Some people do, but most people in general are just like, oh, how fun. Right. Right. So siblings could be involved, communications from siblings, possibly. Again, it could just be peers and friends and coworkers and sales. But it's, it's something new starting back up again. It's not necessarily new like you've never done it before because that's what this shows. This is like we're doing the chores, but yet they're not necessarily new, right? Like we've done these, we've done these jobs before. It's just like it's the rotation where it's laundry day, right? Or it's chop wood day that sort of a thing. Hope that helps. Let's go on to your next new beginning. Your next new beginning brings us to the new moon, right? And this is more towards the end of December. It's like, no, or I'm sorry, December, December 23rd is this new, next new beginning. And this is in your 12th house. Okay. So this is your hidden 12th house is the hidden, right? It's your subconscious. It could be dreams, right? So do you have do you have ambitions and goals um, that are sort of hidden from you, right? Is there something there that you dream about, but you probably haven't shared? And these could be things that you don't even, that you're not even aware of, because these are ambitions and goals that might seem really 
lofty to you at some times where you kind of feel like, oh, I could never reach those goals or never reach those ambitions or the professional career that you wanted to get, but you're like, oh, I could never do that. Um, there's a reason for that because when you have like the Capricorn energy, my professional goals, my work, my career, um, in your uh, 12th house of the hidden, you may feel as though there were times where it's like, you're the behind the scenes person. Yeah. You're not necessarily the person who's out on the stage and the spotlight's on you. Cause that's, that's the 12th house. It's I'm doing the work, but nobody sees me. They don't realize I do the work. Right. Cause it's Pisces. And that's, that's, you know, that's the stage hands, you know, or the, or the people who are in the production end of it, they're not on the screen. We don't see their names until we see the credits, right? Like all that goes into the play and the production, there's a lot, there's a buttload of people. And uh, we may even hear the music and the words, like you might be the writer or something, right? But it's stuff that's behind the scenes. So you might be very, have some really awesome creative skills for others in your life. Like I know a friend who creates or who was recently creating, I think he said video games or some, I can't remember what he was talking about, but that's what he was in the midst of doing. So being the creator of something like that, yeah, he's not on the screen, you know, he's behind the scene. And that's what this energy is. But this is a new beginning. Yeah. And it's a big new beginning because it's near another world access point. It's a new moon and it happens on the 23rd. I said that, but it's at 132 in Capricorn energy. So a new goal, a new ambition, possibly new work, uh, a creative aspect to it. Um, and it's like responsibilities, right? It's also rules and regulations. I, I will add in there. It's a new start. And it's a, it's a new start that is to help you to achieve long-term goal, right? Remember Capricorn energy is tangible. It's structures of societies. Yeah. And so long-term securities are involved. What do you need to establish your long-term security? Think about that. While you're thinking, I'm going to shuffle the cards one more time and pull one for you so that we can uh, get a little bit more details on your new beginning. They're saying to give this one one of these. Okay. Like, sure, whatever you say. They're saying to stop and to pull the card from the bottom. Ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. We see Mercury and Mars. Okay. So keep this in mind. This is a new beginning. Uh, when we see Mercury and Mars, right? There's words and talking and communication happening. Now, because Mars is on the card, Mars tends to be malefic energy. So what that means when I say malefic, it just can simply mean like there are people um, saying things that could be hurtful. So it could be like lots of, uh, what it's the word, rumors, people spreading gossip, right? People making judgments on others, something strange about a communication happening and to just be aware because it's the 12th house of Pisces. So I didn't really, I don't really talk about the negative side too much when I talk about 12th house, just because all the other books I read learning astrology had nothing positive to say about the 12th house. So I tend to, to kind of focus only on the positive, but what happens in the 12th is there could be something or someone, a communication that's hidden from you that you're not aware of. And it doesn't mean you did something wrong. You know, it could be like you missed it. You didn't see it. It was hidden. Right. And so somebody may make an assumption about you like, oh, they're ignoring me type of thing. Could be, it's a miscommunication for sure. That's what this card shows. It's misinformation and miscommunication. Somebody said this woman is a witch, right? I mean, I'm assuming looking at the dated clothing. And so now the poor woman is uh, the gallows, I think that's called. I'm not even sure, but whatever the heck that is. Yeah. So not fun, right? Just be aware of assertive communications. We kind of talked about that already and the lack of patience with the Jupiter energy, but this is about that 12th house new beginning. So you're going to proceed cautiously with this card. And, and, and just remember patience, but to be firm and fair and clear, double, triple check the sources. Below the video, I'll have all the degrees for those of you who like to pay attention to the degrees in your chart. Again, if you don't know and you want to know, just comment below.